We present here a device which can split up a beam of light into the shapes it's composed of. Okay, so what does that mean? To split up what we see as color, we could use something like this dispersive prism here. It'll take a beam such as white light and it'll split it up into its spectral components like the colors of the rainbow. But a beam of light doesn't just have colors, it also has a shape. It conveys an image. It looks like something. How can that be described? Let's take this image here, a smiley face. We can think of it as being composed of a bunch of pixels. We can make our smiley face by adding together a set of these pixels. Each pixel has its own location. It doesn't overlap with any of the other pixels. All the pixels are independent. But added together, they make our smiley face. And the more we add, the better the quality of the smiley face becomes. The idea of pixels is easy to understand and it's an easy way of representing an image on a display or capturing it with a camera. And it's even kind of how your eye works, but it's not the only way to represent an image. And it's often not even a particularly good way of representing an image or a particularly relevant way of representing an image. Another common way to represent an image or some other beam of light is as the summation of lots of different infinitely large flat waves all traveling at different angles. When these waves interfere in the plane of interest where our image is, some areas get bright, some areas get dark, and together they make our smiley face. Just like with the pixels, the more of these angle components we add together, the better our approximation gets. Now the colors here don't represent the colors you'd see with your eye. In this case, you just see one color everywhere. They represent what's called the phase of the beam. They represent what point in the cycle of the oscillating light wave it's at. So blue means it's in the middle of the cycle and red means it's at the end of one cycle and the start of the next cycle. So if the colors are mismatched, it'll mean that two points will get dimmer if you add them together. And if the colors are matched, when you add them together, it'll get brighter. It just defines how they interfere with each other. Representing an image as a sum of these angle components called the Fourier components, which is like the opposite of the pixel representation, is much better in a lot of scenarios. So for instance, it's related to how JPEGs represent and compress images, as you often find that even though an image has a lot of pixels, you can get away with describing it with relatively few of these tilted angle waves and hence store it as a smaller file. If we want to split up an image into these Fourier components, these angle components, like we can split up an image into its pixels using a camera, that's actually pretty easy because that's what a lens does. A lens converts positions like pixel positions on one side to big tilted waves traveling at a specific angle on the other. So the position on one side sets the angle on the other and vice versa. Now let's look at how our smiley face shaped beam propagates as it travels. It doesn't maintain its shape. It diffracts. It does what you'd normally see as going out of focus. All the pixels of the smiley face spread out. They interfere with each other to create this new pattern, which turns out to be the same operation that a lens does. It converts pixel like positions to angles. Let's take a look at that little square block of light like a pixel. That also won't maintain its shape as it travels. It diffracts, interferes with itself, and turns into something else. Because neither of these beams, not smiley faces, not pixels, have any special propagation properties as they go forward. They're just some arbitrary shapes of no real significance. However, there are certain special types of beams that do maintain their shape as they propagate. They're called the Gaussian beams or optical vortices. We can see that as they travel forward, they maintain their shape. That shape is a bunch of rings that corkscrew and rotate around the axis of the beam like a propeller. Importantly, they have the property that they look the same everywhere along the beam. The shape doesn't change. In fact, what it actually means is the pixel representation and the angle representation of this beam are the same shape. They're that same Laguerre Gaussian vortex looking beam. And they have the property that you'd normally think of when you think of a laser beam, a long, narrow beam of light that looks the same all the way along the beam as it travels. And just like our pixels or with our big angled waves, we can approximate any image by adding together these Laguerre Gaussian components. Again, the more you add, the better the approximation gets, just like adding more pixels to your image. Because of these properties, they're the natural way of describing beams of light. Like pixels are for digital cameras, the Gare Gaussian components are for traveling light beams. And hence, they come up in a lot of different circumstances. For example, imagine sending a beam from one location to another. A Gare Gaussian beam will look the same at the transmitter as it does for the receiver. 
unlike our smiley face, unlike our square pixel, which would look different. Imagine a beam being manipulated with lenses. Unlike our smiley face or our pixel, it would look the same on both sides of the lens and everywhere in between, whether it's in focus or whether it's out of focus. There are also the beam type or closely related to the beam types, which will naturally come out of many lasers. And it also has other properties, which mean that under certain approximations, it also maintains its shape as it travels through common types of optical fiber. Now, if we want to decompose an image into pixels, that's straightforward. You can just use a camera. And if you want to decompose an image into its angle components, that's also straightforward because you can just use a lens. But if you want to decompose a beam into its Laguerre Gaussian components, you'd have been out of luck because such a thing didn't previously exist. And it's a bit weird that it didn't exist because it's such a common and fundamental type of spatial component in beam optics. It's used in many different applications, but there was no device that could do even this basic operation. So imagine trying to manipulate or analyze colors of light without things like dispersive prisms or trying to take an image of an object without pixels or without lenses. What we've done here is design a device which consists of a cascade of pixelated planes, seven of them, which can transform an input beam, like say our smiley face or anything else for that matter, into an array of spots, with each spot representing a particular Laguerre Gaussian component that made up that original beam. Each pixel in each plane has a different thickness, causing the light to speed up or slow down at that particular position, such that when taken together, all these waves at all these positions over all these planes add up at the output side, such that each Laguerre Gaussian component only adds up constructively in one place. It's assigned output spot location and destructively everywhere else. So it's like a lens converts angles to positions, this device converts Laguerre Gaussian components to positions. It's our hope that this new device, both due to the functionality it performs, but also the relative simplicity at which it can be built, will aid many applications that work with light beams, from imaging to telecommunications.